Welcome back to Coffee and Conversation. And those of you with sharp eyes have probably noticed that even though I'm still filming in the same spot, I have actually changed the viewing angle. And there was a reason for this, because if you will recall, a few weeks ago, somebody had said in the comments that they would like it if I would show different ways of wearing and tying scarves. So I wanted you to see this one because this is another super simple. And please remember, when I tie a scarf, it needs to be simple. I am not going to spend 15 minutes fussing with something, you know, on my way out the door, mostly because I can't split brain and walking and tying a scarf is probably the surest formula I know of for broken hip. So no, I do it quick and done. So this one, uh, I wanted to show you simply because as I say, it's so easy. So let me show you. This is just a thin silk scarf. Um, and it's, it's got a crinkly texture, which makes it really good for this. So I've got it tied in a knot. I'm grabbing one end and I'm wrapping it half bow. That's all. So that I have one little loop and I can fuss with it. Not while I'm walking, of course, but I can fuss with it and get it to look whatever I want it to look like. And it's very simple, but it makes a little bit of a change. Let's see if I can tease that out a little. Uh, it makes a change from just having it tied with the ends flying out. I did want a chance to show you this because I took that request very seriously. There was a long time when I wasn't really wearing my scarves. I'm in the middle of nowhere, as I'm sure you know. And, you know, haute couture around here is called Target. So uh, I had a lot of things that just weren't seeing the light of day. Not the way they did in Boston, in New York, in D.C., because we are a far, far cry from the big city here. So... I, I wasn't wearing a lot of things and I don't want any of you to feel like you're not going to wear things in your closet for no better reason than you just can't think of a new and interesting way to tie a scarf or because you watch those scarf tying tutorials on YouTube and it's like, whoa, I need to take notes. I should just take pictures. I should get that video on my phone and stand with it in front of the mirror because it's so complicated. There is absolutely no way I'm going to do it without notes or a video in my hand. So yeah, the super easy stuff, just making it a little interesting, making it a little fun. Uh, and the reason, well, the reason for this scarf in particular is I am wearing my yellow scarves. So for those of you who don't follow over on the Just Chatting videos on Thursday and Sunday evenings, uh, we decided in, in the comments section, interestingly enough, over there, that we're just going to wear a little yellow to wish Catherine the Princess of Wales health and prosperity as she is not doing well. So that's it. This is my yellow. Uh, I don't have a lot of yellow in my wardrobe, but we are going to talk about that in a minute because I want to talk about colorful clothing. So when we come back. So I imagine many of you noticed that Audie is not out here harassing me. He's in sleeping in the bed. Yesterday morning when I I let him out, he was supposed to come back in. 
He said, no, I'm not coming back in. I said, I have to go to the pharmacy. If you stay out, you're going to be out for an hour. And he's like, I don't care. And strutted off. When I came back, he was frantic. He was in the middle of the yard, wailing at me, trying to humiliate me in front of the neighbors. So I picked him up. I brought him in the house. All was fine. He just eventually got over it. But I realized today that I mocked him for this, and I probably shouldn't. Because for the last, I don't know, maybe 20 hours or so, he has been cuddled up on my bed, on my bathrobe. Oh, I shouldn't say on my bed. I should say in my bed. He's burrowed under the covers. And I think he missed me. I think this was traumatic for him, that he didn't want to be out. And, you know, I was gone. I think in his little cat brain, he thought I left him, that I wasn't coming back. So, yeah. Yeah. Now he is just enjoying sleeping in my space, rolling in my smell. So I'm feeling like a bad cat mom. Uh, interestingly enough, oh, he snuggled with me all night long, so he is getting plenty of attention. I just don't think it's quite enough to make up for having been abandoned yesterday morning. So he and I are going to have to have a talk about that because... If I have to go, he has to come in, and that's all there is to it. So no more Audie gets to decide when and where he leaves. So that's just the Audie news. Now, color. Okay. I watch, as you know, I watch the fashionistas on YouTube, and I always try to pay attention to a representative group of them to see what the themes are, what what is being uh, offered to the public in terms of the advice they are handing out. And very often I can spot themes and threads very quickly and easily because I will watch so many of them, in, usually in snatches, it's hard for me to watch an entire video like this, and what I am seeing now for, I would say, spring, summer 2024, is they are all preaching color. Bring color into your wardrobe. Well, as usual, of course, I have complaints about this, given some of the fashionistas who are advocating color, because these tend to be young women who have nothing but black and white in their own closets. And they're going out there making videos, telling people like you and me how to bring color into our wardrobes when they don't even know how to bring color into their own. So, yeah, I get a bit of a chuckle out of that. But when I, oh, and the other thing is, whenever I've been watching YouTube fashionista videos, I find that I, I hear myself saying, if I hear the word elevate one more time, I'm going to scream. If I hear the word lux one more time, I'm going to scream. They, they have their own vocabulary, which sadly they overuse. So yeah, it can be grueling, but I love you so I do it. So I thought I would share my views on bringing color into your wardrobe with you. Now, what I am wearing right now, by the way, and I wore this for a reason, even though this is not something I would wear out in the street. This is a very dark green sweater. And I say this because I don't know if you're watching this on a phone that might not have good color clarity, a computer that, again, might not have good color clarity. You know that no sh notice you always get when you're shopping online. Different monitors may show colors differently. Well, this is dark green. I would imagine from a distance it could easily be taken for black. The shirt underneath, which by the way is just a t-shirt, is a color I would call bronze. 
because it is an interesting sort of brown with touches of orange. I would say the overall color is brown, but I can absolutely see some orange in this. Would I wear these colors together? No. Could it be done? Oh yeah, easily. And I've got a couple of scarves that could make that happen. But the reason that I wanted to show you this is these are not what I would call colors because these are neutrals. In my wardrobe, that's how they function as neutrals. If I want a color, I want red. I don't want a wimpy yellow like this, and I will, yeah, I'll explain that in a little bit. I don't want a wimpy yellow. I want like a punch in the face, yield sign yellow. Oh, for those of you not in the United States, it, that's kind of a buttercup yellow, I would think. But here in the U.S., the traffic signs advising you to yield are a very distinct color of yellow, school bus yellow, yellow. And the reason for that is if I want color in my wardrobe, it's because I want color. I want something that just socks you in the jaw. I don't want something like the colors I am wearing. Now, let's face it. They're colors. They're not black. They're not white. They're not gray. And why is that? Because you all know the answer to this, because there is very little black or white or gray in my wardrobe, because even my neutrals are colorful, because I like color. So when I look at something like this, this is not color. This is a backdrop. The scarf, I said I was coming back to this. Now, I said this was a yellow scarf, because when this scarf is laying on, uh, on, on white. If I throw this on top of the bed, on top of the white comforter, it looks very yellow. When I wear it with this bronze colored t-shirt, all of the shades of brown and caramel are coming out instead of the yellow. That end I, I overestimated the amount of yellow I had in my wardrobe when I was all gung-ho for that idea of, oh, well, let's wear yellow for Catherine. If I had actually taken the time to get up, go in my closet, see what I had that was colorful, I probably would have said, yeah, let's, let's stick with blue. But no, we're doing yellow, so I am... <sighs> I am going to be skirting the line between yellow and beige and other colors just to try to get through the period of time in which I need to be decked out in yellow. So, yes, I'm cheating. Anyway, when I look at bringing color into your wardrobe, the advice that they are giving is not good advice. One of them, and I just, just watched her video before making this, one of them had said, well, I, when I first started bringing color into my wardrobe, I would just wear a red top with black pants. Well, yeah, that is a color statement. How many of us remember Nancy Reagan and remember that Nancy Reagan was considered a very well-dressed woman and she loved that red and black combination. That was like, that was hardcore 90s and it was stunning. It was striking. The other thing about red and black, and the fashionistas don't know this because they've never really studied the psychology of color. Who knows what they study? Um, but red and black are a power color combination. If you want to make a statement, if you want to bring a, a bold color statement into your wardrobe, red, oh, red is absolutely a statement. And people will say, well, 
what, what if I wear cool colors or what if I wear warm colors? The great thing about red is there are cool reds, there are warm reds, everybody can find a shade of red that looks good on them. Furthermore, unless you just plain hate red, and some people do, most people can find a shade of red they like and feel comfortable with. You take that red and you pair it with black and it is not just extremely stylish, it is extremely professional and it is extremely powerful as a color combination. If you want to get noticed in a way that, you know, people will open doors for you, oh, red and black is the one you want. So, I, I, it's like my mind boggles at this, and it shouldn't, because these fashionistas, as I say, it's the same group who last year were saying, well, let's just go to black and white in our wardrobe, and, you know, it's like, come on. So now, because the styles have changed, they're saying, well, we're going to throw in color. It's like, please, darling, if you had any affinity for color, you wouldn't have been telling everybody black and white last year. And I've mentioned this before. It's Styles change, trends change. And so the people who are giving you advice have to put out their videos. They're constantly needing to churn out new videos on new topics. So they are giving you advice in June that directly contradicts the advice they gave you in December. So we have to be very careful. And we also have to listen to our own voice, which is easy enough. Do you like red? If you like red, and that, and here we're going back to color psychology again, and this is a part of color theory, the psychological impact of color. If you like a nice, bold fire engine red, chances are you are going to love red and black. Why? Because you gravitate automatically. The mere fact that you like red says that you gravitate toward striking bold colors. So yeah, that bold statement is going to resonate with you. If, on the other hand, you're one of those people who say, well, I can't quite do red, but oh, I'll go for a shade of pink. Oh, pink and black, by the way. That was the 80s color. Um, and it was also the 50s color. Remember Elvis? Pink and black. Pink and black can be amazing. Early 80s, yellow and black. All my children, Susan Lucci. I can remember that woman. My mother followed all my children. I, which is why I can never follow a soap opera in my life, but I can give you the names of all of them, all the characters and the actors who played them, because my mother treated them like they were family. She once called me up at work and said, oh my God, I had to tell you Paul died. My mother's maiden name was Paul. So needless to say, I have cousins left, right, and sideways, whose first name is Paul. Because of that, my mother's sisters would have children and they'd give the child their family name. So I was absolutely frantic, but I didn't know which Paul she was talking about. However, I didn't want to give her the idea that I was so ignorant of what was going on in my own family that I didn't even know which one of my cousins had passed away. And I was talking to her about it, and eventually I just said, so are we going to the funeral? And my mother just stopped. And I, and it's just, she's blanking on the other end of the phone. Said, what do you mean? Is it Paul's funeral? Are we going? How could we do that, she says. And now I'm thinking, oh, this is my cousin in Chicago. Yeah, she's thinking we're not going to go all the way out there. And then she says, you know this is Paul on uh, The Guiding Light. That's what Paul was on. You know this is Paul on The Guiding Light on my show. I just hung up the phone. It was just, it was pathetic. That was sort of a low point in my relationship with my mother. But yes, she, oh. So I know everyone, because my mother made sure I did, 
And in the early 80s, Susan Lucci, she played a character on All My Children called Erica Kane. I can do this. My goodness, I'm dredging this up. And she wore pink and black for like two years. Um, no, I'm sorry, yellow and black for two years. When I first saw her wearing yellow and black, I thought, my goodness, she looks like a bumblebee. And eventually, because of the repetition, I started to find it interesting. I started to find it attractive after that. And by the end of that two-year period, I started to think of this as Susan Lucci's signature color. So there you go. We, we people my age, and many of you are, some of you are even older, and many of you may not be my age, but you're close to it. We remember the way colors came and went, what came in, what was popular, what was trendy. Some of us do remember pink and black from Elvis Presley. Others will remember pink and black from the mid to late 80s. Others won't be able to do that, but they'll remember the Nancy Reagan, red and black. So, yeah, those of us who have been around know that color combinations not only come and go, but in general, if you wait long enough, they no longer look dated. And here's what I mean by that. Susan Lucci and the yellow and black that she wore in the early 80s. If you pulled yellow and black and wore it together in, say, the mid to late 80s, it might look like you were wearing a dated color combination. On the other hand, mid 90s, late 90s, no, because enough time had gone by to change dated to new and fresh and novel. That always happens. That is always going to happen. A little bit of time and things are dated, a lot of time, and they are just ready for a comeback. So when you look at pulling colors in, think back to the color combinations that you remember from junior high school. Oh gosh, I shouldn't have said that. I was in junior high school in the psychedelic 60s. So yes, the color combinations then were like lime green and fuchsia. Uh, and yes, we did look like Bozo the Clown. But think back. What were your favorite color combinations when you were young? What, were, what was the color combination you wore to your prom? What was the color combination you wore, you know, for your senior pictures, whatever. Think back. What was it that made you happy that you think looked good on you? Bring it back. There's no reason why we have to go with young people or Fashion designers' notions of what the in color is this year. We can choose it ourselves. We can grab color combinations from our past. And for many of us, our past has been quite a number of years. Bring them back and say, I love this. Um, interestingly enough, red, white, and blue was a very hot color combination. I know the younger among you are thinking, oh, yeah, 1976, the Bicentennial, no. Actually, it was a little earlier than that. It was probably around 72, 73, as we were sort of moving toward the Bicentennial. Everything was red, white, and blue. That was just such a popular color combination. Uh, a few years later, this is probably mid-70s, getting closer to the bicentennial. Uh, pink and purple, for some reason. That was a hottie. And I think back, and there are just so many. I, I'd be willing to bet you anything that every last one of you has a particular color combination that just spoke to you when you were younger. Um, let's see, mid-60s. Uh, cranberry blueberry 
that's what they were calling it. And it was a sort of maroonish cranberry kind of red, a very deep red, um, not quite blood red. There was a little more blue in it, more of a purple tinge to the red, and then a navy blue. And they would call that com com combination uh, cranberry blueberry. Raspberry blueberry was totally different. That was Jackie Kennedy's suit in Dallas, and that's why it was rolling around in my head. I'm so tempted to refer to that color combination as, as raspberry blueberry just because of that um, recollection, but it, actually it was cranberry blueberry mid-60s and we've all got them. If we stop and think about it, I'm sure we've all got loads of them, not just one or two. And I'm just pulling these out of, pulling these out of my butt, frankly, pulling these out of my, my memory from high school, from junior high school, the hot color combinations. We know how to combine colors because we've done it before. We've seen just about every color in the rainbow becoming the hot color of 1971, 1984, 1992, 2011. Doesn't matter. We have long lives and most of us have pretty long memories too. So we remember these colors and what was being worn with them. What were the combinations? What were people doing that they felt made them look good? So we don't need the fashionistas to tell us how to put colors together. And when a fashionista says, oh, red and black, it was too overwhelming. I'm like, My first thought is, where was she in the 90s? Well, kindergarten, most likely. Of course she doesn't remember Nancy Reagan. Of course she doesn't remember black and red being the hot color combination for women of stature. You know. Of course that is going to look bold and, and over the top to someone who six months ago didn't even have anything like gray or off-white in her closet. Yeah, of course it is. So I guess the bottom line is it goes back to what I always say when I get an overdose of the fashionistas. Listen to them with care. Don't just buy into everything they have to say. It, the fact is their job is to encourage you to buy whatever they are selling on their videos. And one of the very annoying things about them, especially on YouTube, is the sponsored video. I would say nine out of 10 of the fashionistas I watch at any given moment, nine out of 10 videos are sponsored by a clothing company. So when the fashionista is talking to you about what looks good, what you should wear, just pay attention. Is that video being sponsored? Is she pushing a line of clothing? Like I say nine times out of 10. And I, I've been doing this long enough so that I am very comfortable with those statistics. Yes, they are very often hyping the things that, that are sponsoring their videos. They will be jumping on a new trend because they have to keep rolling out videos and they need fresh content. So sure, new trend, here you go. I and mean, I make videos, I know there is a certain amount of pressure to come up with fresh content. Uh, today, and this is just sort of a digression, after yesterday's video, talking about the Amish and the Mennonites and, and the people of a plain community, and then about our, our Gen Z children being in the pits of despair and loneliness, I promised at the end of that video that we would do something much livelier today. So 
I, I had a certain amount of pressure to come up with a lively video topic. This one, well, this one is a natural because I've been following this new color trend for the last, probably the last two weeks, thinking, oh yeah, I got to do a video about this. But yeah, perfect. We are going from the pits of Gen Z despair to red, green, purple, orange color. Let's just, let's just go to town with it. But we do have to be careful that we are not being sandbagged by someone else's pressure to provide comment. Yeah, because that's all there is to it. If somebody has to come up with new fresh content, they're going to do it. We do not need to look at this and say, well, this is the gospel truth. Is it? Is it? Or is it simply what the sponsor of that video is selling? Is it the video content creator's need to come up with fresh content? So I would say to you, it's probably a combination of both because on our Coffee and Conversation videos, uh, gosh, it was more than a year ago, I think, that we first started talking about throwing color into our wardrobes. So you all know, this is how I do it. I will grab a brightly colored scarf because most of my sweaters, my shirts, my pants are neutrals. I like neutrals. So I also like color. So when I want to jazz things up, I can throw on as many neutrals as I please, not these two together. Uh, like I say, I have I have at least one or two scarves that could make this work, but this is not a color combination I'm in love with. But yeah, I love my neutrals. And I also love the daylights out of my color. That color comes to me with the scarves. That's how I do it. There are many of you. Oh, by the way, that's not the only way I do it. Let me start to say that. That's not. I actually do have at least half a dozen shirts that are brightly colored. I do not have pants that are brightly colored, which goes back to my childhood in the 60s and 70s when pants were in outrageous colors. It was everything from hot pink shorts to, to striped trousers. You all remember them. We all know about them. And yeah, I, I recoil against that. So pants are always going to be neutral for me. But I do have a few tops that are not, that are, are bright colors, and I love them. But for the most part, yeah, I want color, I get a scarf. You may be doing this very differently. For you, your color might come from you know, a hot pink blazer, you know, and by the way, I have seen those. They are stunning. I actually have a navy blazer in my closet, and at one point I thought about dyeing it hot pink because I saw a woman in a hot pink blazer and thought, I love that. I didn't dye it, but the point is, the impulse was there. So it may be a hot pink blazer. It could be anything. You could be a dress person. I am not a dress person. And you could have like birds of paradise on your dress and that's your splash of color. That is fine. The thing is, take the advice of the fashionistas with caution. Just don't buy into whatever they're saying just because they're saying it. Because, like I say, six months ago they were saying something very different, and I'm pretty sure that if we prowled through their closets right now, we would probably not be seeing the things they are encouraging us to buy. Just a word to the wise. All right, that's what I have for you today. Uh, what are the takeaways? 
Don't trust the fashionistas. You can't trust anybody who is making money based on their ability to jump on a new trend. It's just that, that simple. If you agree with what they say, fabulous. If their advice works for you, fabulous. But don't just buy into it because someone said so. So that's one. Two, you like color? Think back. Think back to your childhood, your young adulthood, and look at the way those colors were put together in that era. Because that is going to be the best template you can have. And why not? Our generation lived through it. We wore those clothes. We know how well they worked. And the fashionistas don't remember. So we run across a fashionista on the street. We are going to look cutting edge and trendy. All right. So that's what I have for you today. We're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. Uh, Audie is still asleep. He is still recovering from being left alone for an hour. See, I'm making fun of him again. I shouldn't do that because I'm, I, I'm sure in his little cat mind, he thought I wasn't coming back. So I'm going to have to do something nice for him and snuggle him or whatever. It's not like I don't do nice things for this cat all the time, but he does seem a little insecure this weekend. All right, uh, we will take a look at a slideshow on the way out. We didn't get Audie, so anyway, we're not going to see another Audie slideshow. We're going to take a look at other cats. So have a terrific day.